Australia or Australia or Australia. Australia, mate. Everyone has asked us how much did it cost us to drive around or drive through Australia. So we decided to give you all the figures that we have. We kept record of absolutely everything we spent on the trip. So here we go. Okay guys, I'm from Australia so I really wanted to explore my home country first because I'd never really had the time to do so. Alex has been living with me there for about the past five years before we left on this mm -hmm. trip. So he's getting the Australian accent. I don't know, what do you guys think? Give us a comment down below if you liked his Australian accent or not. So we spent 111 days and we've driven 17,205 kilometres through six different states or territories in Australia. We started in Perth and then went up and down and up. To Sydney where we shipped the car from to the USA and that's where we kept going afterward. So Michaela how much did it all cost? We'll get there we'll get there give us a sec we've got so basically what we've done is we've put all the costs into different categories to make it make sense for you guys and at the end we'll get to the grand total but we'll start from the most expensive cost for us which was? Which was it? No. Uh, sure it was diesel. Diesel. And that of course makes sense because we did it in a short period of time and we had a lot of kilometers to drive. So we travel, we were traveling for 111 days which is just a little over three and a half months which isn't a long time um, but we needed to leave Australia um, as soon as possible. To North America before winter yeah. because winter is coming. <laughs> so we spent 3062 is that American or Australian dollars? Australian dollars. Australian dollars in 111 days driving 17,000 and a bit kilometers. For those wondering, we drove on average around 155 kilometers a day. Mm -hmm. And that adds up to 2,374 liters of diesel. On average, we we're paying around $1.29 Australian dollars per liter, um, but we obviously spent less and more than that. I think our cheapest fuel was in Perth at the very beginning of our trip. We, we spent paid $1.10 in Perth. And the most expensive we paid was $2.10 along the Gibber River Road, which is in like this really remote corner of the northwest of Western Australia. So we tried to take as much of the fuel as we possibly could in our jerry can and our second fuel tank. But we still needed about 30 litres. Yeah. So we didn't buy much fuel there, but that was the most expensive we paid for. Mm -hmm. All right. The second biggest expense of the trip is food and groceries. So this includes eating out as well as um, buying toiletries, and food and drinks at supermarkets. How much did we spend? We spent 1,604 American uh, blah, 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 Australian dollars. 1,604. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. But then again, we were just driving for 111 days. Yeah, but we did eat out a few times as well. Um, and did we? Yeah, we did. We had emu. She had a $15 milkshake. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, and they're like, it's better than yours. much only reason that we decided to come to Canberra was to try a milkshake. Yeah, I had a $15 that was, that was a totally big hit to the That budget. was the best thing that I ate in the whole trip of, on Australia. But we also <laughs> ate emu and kangaroo and crocodile in at the Prairie Hotel in South Australia. Tiny little place. Camel sausage. And you had a big steak for your birthday in Adelaide. That's true. After groceries, the next most expensive thing we've had was car related repairs and that was mainly due to the windscreen crack that we had in Alice Springs that after was a hailstorm. crazy guys. Literally we had like hailstones this big up in the car. We almost had a tree fall on top of us and stopped the car. That was about it. We survived. So and it that cost, cost us, us 250 bucks, which is just a windscreen component, but then adding um, oil changes, oil filters, and other expenses related to the car, we added up to a total of 426 Australian dollars. We did two oil changes, but one was for free. For free. Thanks, Delica Garage. Thank you. Okay, next up was shopping for items and gifts for friends and family back home. In total, we paid 336 dollars. And we didn't hold back, like we had a few birthdays that we still like to send gifts home. And we had we had people um, having us over as well and we always bought a little gift for them. Mm -hmm. um, which is important, it's share the wealth. Share the wealth. Share the wealth. 
Next is paid attractions, and that will mainly include the um, national park national plus. parks, but as well as the crocodile jumping hunting. Oh my god, guys! We went on a cruise where we saw massive jumping crocodiles. Literally, we we're in a boat with these like six and a half meter long crocodiles. <laughs> So that was incredible. That it was, was like forty five dollars or something each, yeah. But it was worth it. We also went to Sovereign Hill, which is a really nice historical town. That was town. really worth it. It was one of our favorite things in the It was really pretty. We went for like the winter festival there. And we also hired snow chains to go up onto Mount Hotham, which cost a little bit too. But we were actually able to get into the ski resort for free because we went after 2 p.m. I think it's mm -hmm. free. Hey guys, we're at the very bottom of the snowy mountains in Victoria. Just waiting for our wheel chains, the snow chains, to come and get fitted so that we can go up into the mountains and see the snow. So we spent 200 and 84 bucks with paid attractions. Next up we have um, transportation. So we did spend around $172, actually exactly $172, on public transport. And that was mainly the... Getting in and out of big cities or to the airport. Yeah, we spent a lot of money for the train going from, from Sydney to Sydney airport when we left. Um, and also whenever we came to a big city we kind of left the car and used public transport um, so we didn't have to deal with congestion and parking. Right. Next and last is accommodation. So we spent $114 in accommodation in 111 days. That's, That's really pretty good. much $1.20 per day average. For three and a half months. <laughs> yeah, so we did that obviously by sleeping in the car as often as we possibly could. Um, and we actually have a list of where we slept. So 59% of the time we were staying at freer wild campsites just in the bush or sometimes even in the city we were just well like, yeah australia is just a free camping paradise really yeah you can stay for free pretty much anywhere if well, you're stealth enough yeah you have to be stealthy sometimes because some caravan parks and police officers don't like you parking in cities but yeah. you can get around it so for 30 percent of the time we stayed with friends so mm -hmm. if you add that up 90 percent of the time we didn't pay for accommodation at all mm -hmm. and for when we did pay it was just for campsites which was 13 nights or around 11 percent of the time and that was where $114 went. So like Alex said, um, the biggest unforeseen cost that we had were the, when the windscreen broke and also we did get a parking ticket when we were in Sydney. So that we was didn't mean to. We just parked there and we... We are local, so we didn't. Yeah. Oh, it went expired? Is that why we got? Yeah, it was like a two-hour parking. Didn't we? Anyway, so that was like $108 for that parking ticket. All right, so we're coming to the moment that you're all wondering how much did it cost in total. Drum roll, please. You ready? It was? 6,106 Australian dollars. That's quite a lot actually for three and a half months. Well, the averages are in at 27 and a half dollars per person per day. Yeah, definitely well worth it to see Australia, one of the most beautiful, in my opinion, sorry, I'm a bit biased, and overland of friendly countries in the world. Um, I guess we spent so much because we had to pack it down in such a short amount of time. So if you wanted to do the same trip, you could actually extend the time and really only, you'd only need to pay for food. Because the fuel would be exactly the same. Yeah, just spend so more time in So your average cost per day would be a lot lower. Yeah, but that being said, unfortunately we missed out on Queensland and Tasmania and I highly recommend you guys to, if you're doing, if you're planning a trip through Australia, don't miss them out. We're really sorry that we didn't get to go there and we do plan to go there in the future. So was it worth it? It was totally worth it. Australia for me is like one of the best overlanding countries in the world. Just because the roads are perfect, everything's so isolated, there is a whole lot of free camping and it's just beautiful. It's, it's super incredible. safe. So you can camp, free camp almost anywhere. You have beaches to yourself. We went to so many beautiful places. All right guys, so $6,000 to do to drive Australia in three and a half months. We thought it was totally worth it. We'd definitely do it again. You could easily spend that taking 10 days in Europe, you know, if you mm -hmm. included your flights to Europe, hotels and stuff, you would easily spend that money in Europe like that. Yep, so if you're planning a trip to Australia, guys, go for it. Have an awesome time. It doesn't matter if you drive a Fort Falcon 
uh, Mitsubishi Delica or Land Cruiser, it's fun in any way. And as we've said, we've actually been driving the world for the last two years. So if you're interested to know the cost of driving the world, we've made a video of that as well, so you can check it out here. And we will be doing videos for each region, so for North America, for Mexico, Central America, South America, as we go along. So, we Keep hope that's driving. been helpful. Yeah, happy travels, guys. See ya. See ya.